Okay, redraft time. These are always very fun to make and also always very contentious on top of that. So just so you know what I'm going to do here to set things up, I'm basically saying, hey, everyone who was drafted in the 2021 draft, we're pretending you actually you know, weren't drafted now. You're going back into a pool and every, every team is going to be able to draft again. It's going to be in the same order that the draft happened in 2021. The one slight difference is still what has happened since then uh, still has happened. So for example, the Jaguars still have Trayvon Walker now, even though uh, the draft happened earlier. That's just kind of how I like to, you know, do this stuff just makes it, you know, a little bit more simple. So with that being said, let's let the redraft get underway. And I'm going to start off with a hot take right off the bat. Number one, I am going Mac Jones. And here's my thought and here's my logic behind it. So I haven't said this, you know, most of this offseason. This is actually a new thought that I've come up with. So uh, there's definitely, you know, logic behind both. And there's an argument to be made that this should not be the case because I'm not saying that I think Mac Jones 10 years from now will be better than Trevor Lawrence or Zach Wilson. But really, when I did that video where I made my own football team and kind of said, okay, uh, you know, I'm going to operate under the actual rules NFL players have to operate or NFL GMs have to operate under and all that stuff. My biggest takeaway was it's really hard to get a wide, get a quarterback who can win a Super Bowl. You, If you want a quarterback who's going to, you know, get you at least like 2.3 wins on average, that's kind of how I view it. Uh, and for cheap or get someone who's just a superstar if you can get someone who's probably going to be like a tier three or tier two quarterback for the next three years that you won't have to pay much to me that puts you in a super bowl window immediately and that is valuable enough that i'm willing to just take that chance and see if i can win a super bowl with mac jones it's not to say that i think his ceiling is higher than either of the next two guys but i would just rather open up that window right away that's my team building philosophy so I probably view Mac Jones very similar to how you guys view Mac Jones. I probably view Zach Wilson and Trevor Lawrence similar to how you all view those two guys as well. Uh, it's just that it's a team building philosophy. I'll take the quarterback that I know is at least good and is currently cheap. Number two, I'm still going Zach Wilson with the Jets. So you might notice that, yes, I'm going Zach Wilson over Trevor Lawrence. But the reasoning for it is I liked Zach Wilson better than Trevor Lawrence coming out of college. I had him as my favorite prospect last year. So uh, I don't think either one of those guys really showed, moved the needle for me too much after their rookie season. Uh, so I'm just going to keep staying with the guy that, you know, I, I like more out of college. So Zach Wilson stays with the Jets here in this redraft. Number three, the 49ers get Trevor Lawrence. And I mean, given some of the reports we've heard about Trey Lance, maybe they would, they wish they could get a redraft here, especially if they get Lawrence, who many people still would have go number one in this redraft. And I don't hate it. I still think the 49ers could use a quarterback. I, I did consider maybe them not going quarterback and staying with Garoppolo, but I actually didn't hate the idea of going after a quarterback there I, I didn't love the the trade up necessarily uh just because i would rather you know have multiple shots as opposed to just one but i understood the logic behind it and if you are going to trade up to get a quarterback and trevor lawrence is available i'm sure they would have taken that number four jamar chase goes to the falcons listen atlanta i'm sure is very happy with kyle pitts and is not looking to move off of him but i'm doing a redraft and right now i do feel like jamar chase is the better player right now I value wide receivers highly, and the Falcons could use a wide receiver, so that also works, and this could actually make the receiving core great in another year when Calvin Ridley comes back and all of that stuff. Uh, Kyle Pitts is still awesome. You, you could have gone Kyle Pitts, but eh, I like Jamar Chase a little bit better. Number five, I am going Kyle Pitts. So they just kind of swap teams really uh, with, you know, in the real real draft, Pitts went four and Chase once goes five. I just had him swap one spot because, again, Pitts is awesome. Pitts and I'm sure Joe Burrow would still be able to you know light the world on fire. He is probably the next best option there uh, in terms of like a receiving threat. I think Kyle Pitts, he's practically a wide receiver uh, that plays tight end. He's fantastic. I'm sure you know neither one of these teams are going to be too hard pressed. They'd probably just both rather have their guy in general, really. But you know that this is uh, I, I did think Chase it gave him the slight edge. Number six, I have Jalen Waddle to the Miami Dolphins. So this one stays the same. We have a couple that ended up staying the same i didn't try to do it this way but part of it does make some sense right if it made sense to do this you know the first time why not make sense to do it this time as well obviously we know more information so that's going to come into play but jalen waddle uh again if i value the wide receiving you know option as highly as i do then obviously having a wide receiver here that's elite or at least maybe not elite yet, but could be elite and is still really good right now, that's going to matter a lot. And we know he fits that scheme well, so I'll just stick with Waddle. 
Number seven, the Detroit Lions are going to maybe, maybe a surprise a little bit. They're going to get Micah Parsons here. Micah Parsons, I thought was fantastic. I thought should have been, you know, an early pick last year. Uh, I didn't like that he fell so much. And I think that, you know, in hindsight, yeah, he probably could have been, uh, you know, that, that maybe could have gone a little earlier. For one thing, I mean, this would make that, you know, uh, defensive line when he's there just that much more lethal. I think the Lions could use a linebacker as well. So we can be off ball linebacker on top of this. And he's kind of just the best player available, I think. And that's the real reason why I'm making this pick is just get a stud player and that's what he can do. Number eight, so the Panthers did select J.C. Horn and, you know, that's kind of a to be determined as he looked good in the small sample size that we saw and then got hurt. But I am going to go with Justin Fields right here, who, if you notice, I actually had Trey Lance higher than Fields in my, uh, you know, pre-draft evaluation. But I, I kind of like what I saw from Fields and we didn't get to see much from Lance. So I'll bump Fields up a little bit in my quarterback ranking. Uh, here and I feel like the Panthers could use a quarterback. I like Matt Corral decently enough, so you know uh, I don't think that like you know that's a still a, a wasted pick necessarily. But they really need a quarterback, or at least need someone who could, they can give an option to. I didn't like that they didn't go quarterback last year. I, they were one of the many teams I was pounding the table for for Mac Jones. I get why they went with J.C. Horn, but given the scenario now give me a quarterback who I think we have a chance uh, to maybe do something with. The Denver Broncos, give me Creed Humphrey here, a guy who wasn't even a first round pick last year for the Kansas City Chiefs. He now goes to a, a division rival in the Denver Broncos in this redraft. Uh, Lloyd Cushenberry, I think, is a fine center, but uh, they could use an upgrade, and Creed Humphrey is maybe the best center in football already one year into it. The only real knock against him is that he's a center. Like, that's the only negative towards him is the position he plays. So I think, you know, help protect Russell Wilson a little bit more, get a great center. To me, this is uh, this feels like a perfect fit. Number 10, the Philadelphia Eagles getting Jeremiah Awusa koromora uh, JOK had a great rookie season last year year after being kind of a surprise non-first rounder ends up going to the second round but in hindsight probably could have gone earlier and you know the Eagles and Browns play a similar scheme so there's no scheme question there I think he would be able to thrive there and for the Philadelphia Eagles like you know uh DeMonta Smith is also still good like they could have just stuck with what they wanted but I feel like they could use a linebacker and they did just draft you know they got AJ Brown now so that's kind of my logic but if you want to stick with Smith that also could make some sense number 11 the Bears would love this scenario if they could steal Panay Sewell from their division rival I like Sewell. I think Sewell uh, has done some nice things. I think he was a bit of a disappointment his rookie year from what we expected. He was still good. Like, he wasn't bad. But I think we were kind of hoping he would come in and just be like a superstar right away. That didn't exactly happen. But we do know that he can play right or left tackle. I think the right tackle's like, concerns were overblown. I think he still can play, you know, right tackle if you want to. So him and Tevin Jenkins can, you know, beat the two tackles there that could potentially have some success unless Jenkins goes in the redraft at some point. Who knows? But, uh, you know, as of right now, I think that helping protect, uh, you know, helping get a court, uh, get a, I guess you're not protecting Justin Fields because you don't have a quarterback, but helping, uh, you know, protect whoever it is that ends up being the quarterback could come in handy. Number 12, give me Nate Hobbs for the Cowboys. This was, this was kind of a tough one. I didn't feel great about any of the selection, selections left. I'm sure they would not like this redraft. They're sort of saying, please give me Micah Parsons. P Hobbs is the fifth round pick, so some of you might be saying who. Well, watch his tape and you'll see, like, okay, no, this guy can play and he can really play, uh, you know, maybe the best slot corner in football last year. He was certainly up there and he played in a very similar scheme to what the Cowboys uh, play. So because of that, I certainly think that he's really underrated and he would do the Cowboys a lot of wonders and he can play on the outside as well. Number 13, Rashawn Slater, sticking with Rashawn Slater for the Chargers here. Uh, you know, again, I think that they would be happy just keeping their guy. It's funny because I feel like, you know, last in the actual draft, it felt like, man, they really got to steal for Sean Slater at 13. And now I'm thinking, man, they really got to steal for Sean Slater at 13. It's just kind of how the draft broke down that he kind of fell a little bit, which allows them to, you know, stay the same, which is I'm sure what they would like to do. At 14, the Jets, instead of getting Elijah Vera Tucker, who they got, uh, in the last draft, they are going to go with Devonta Smith. So they get Devonta Smith that the Eagles did not get to help complete that receiving core. You had Garrett Wilson. They have some other options for number three, uh, you know, including Elijah Moore. But getting someone who we know can be a good wide receiver, I think, would definitely benefit them as it still is probably a position that could use another guy in the room for. Number 15, the Patriots do not get Mac Jones anymore, so they need a quarterback. They're going Trey Lance instead. 
here. Uh, they're happy that the Bears did not go quarterback, which in hindsight I probably should have done, but whatever, we're going with it. And uh, the Patriots get Trey Lance, who, again, you needed to take a shot on a quarterback if he falls to you in both the redraft and the real draft, a quarterback fell. Uh, who knows? Maybe Trey Lance in that situation would thrive just the way that we've seen Mac Jones thrive because situation does matter for young quarterbacks. Number 16, I'm going J.C. Horn to the Cardinals. I just love this fit. And, you know, Cardinals uh, secondary got very banged up last year, which is why it looked worse than maybe it actually is. But they could still use another uh, corner and why not another guy who's you know coming off of an injury I, I think that JC Horn could do a lot for this Cardinals team and I think that again he he fits that scheme perfectly it's you know tailor made for him so JC Horn falls further you know they got Zaven Collins in, in the actual draft but in hindsight if they could get a JC Horn instead I think they'd be very happy with that number 17 the Raiders get Patrick Sertan who I'm sure they would be very happy with and another kind of a good scheme fit although maybe the Raiders are changing their scheme so who knows but if they're, you know, it's hard to say exactly what they're going to do. But uh, Sertan is, again, a very hyped up corner who some people absolutely love. I, I like him. I don't love him. But that's just kind of a me thing. I certainly like him. I like him more than Alex Leatherwood. I'll say that much. So him at 17 could definitely help the Raiders. And again, I value good corners. So I think getting a good corner in the middle of the draft would work. The Miami Dolphins just keep selecting guys that they, you know, already selected. So they're going to get Javon Holland here, who is one of the better players in in this draft last year. Uh, he was, you know, I kind of did my tier tiers list a little bit, and he was up there in one of the top tiers. It's just that, like, it's a safety, so there's not as much positional value. But I'm sure they're saying, hey, he meant a lot to us last year. We would like to keep him. Uh, so they're going to get him instead of Jalen Phillips, who they, is still on the board. They could have gone with him and was solid as well, uh, may appear in this redraft. But they're going to go with Javon Holland, who I think meant more to them last year. Number 19 here, Eric Stokes to the balls. The balls is the Washington football team, now the Washington Commanders. Uh, again, the, the Washington Commanders are just a weird team. Like They don't have a clear like uh, hole in their roster, despite the fact, the fact that none of us really feel like they're that good. Like That's kind of just one of those, I don't know how you managed to pull that off. But I feel like they could use a corner, and I like what Eric Stokes brought to the Packers last year. I do still see Stokes as more of a man corner, but he played zone well for the Packers last year, so I'll give the balls... Eric Stokes. At number 20, the Giants got Kadarius Tony last year. Now they're in the redraft. They are getting Pat Fryer move. Not to say that I'm giving up on Tony by any means, but I think that they could use a tight end just as much as they could use a receiver. And Fryer move was really good for Pittsburgh last year. So getting someone who you know can be a good option, it's a position of need. Uh, I like Fryer move, so I'm having him here at number 20. Number 21, the Indianapolis Colts got Quiddy Pay in the actual draft, but I'm going to have them go with a different edge rusher. I'm going to give them Gregory Rousseau, who had the better rookie year. He, he was such a unique prospect last year of, you know, he was good, but there was also just the concern with Rousseau of like, all of, you know, he, we haven't seen him play in a bit, and all of his pressures seemed to be like unique pressures that wouldn't work at the NFL level. But then he was able to, you know, still find ways to get pressure with the Buffalo Bills. So uh, he was probably the best edge rusher out of the rookie class. The Colts could use an edge rusher if they're going to be losing Quiddy Pay. So, uh, you know, getting the guy who played a little bit better than Quiddy Pay last year, uh, that's what I'm going to do. Meanwhile, the Tennessee Titans are going to get Christian Derrissaw here. They got Caleb Farley in the actual draft, who was kind of this like great talent who has injury concerns and you know, got injured. So uh, because of that, I think let's go a different direction in this redraft. And how about Derrissaw, who's, you know, good tackle, who, again, it's kind of weird because like, okay, you know, him and Taylor Lewan are both, you know, typically left tackles, but you, you could move one of them to right. Dylan Radunes is maybe the guy who, you know, we didn't see much of him last year, but maybe you can move him to the inside or maybe you can move Derrissaw to the inside because, you know, Aaron Brewer and Nate Davis aren't exactly uh, superstars by any means. I like Ben Jones, but uh, as a whole, I think that would help kind of complete the Titans uh, offensive line a little. Number 23, I had the Vikings getting Landon Dickerson, who looked okay for the Eagles, but I really like his potential, and he seemingly can play guard, which is interesting to me, but he can also potentially play center, uh, which, you know, the Vikings maybe could use an upgrade from Garrett Bradbury, who has yet to live up to the hype being a first-round center, uh, although there's still some things he does nicely, but, you know, maybe you have him play, uh, you know, play guard, and you can have Cleveland, Bradbury, and Dickerson being the three interior guys, I don't know, plus you've lost Derrissaw, so you do need to help, uh, you know, bolster that offensive line, because Derrissaw got picked one pick earlier, so I think getting Dickerson here would be a good pick. Jalen Phillips at 24 to the Pittsburgh Steelers, I like Najee Harris 
fine, but he's a running back. There's not that much value there. There's more value in an edge rusher, which the, the Steelers don't really need. But wouldn't this just be fun? Jalen Phillips, who got a lot of pressure last year, although like you know like his PFF grade wasn't spectacular, so uh, there's some you know, pros and cons to his game. You could argue that some of the pressures, like a lot came in one specific game, which maybe could inflate it a little bit. But he's definitely a developmental kind of guy, which developing for Pittsburgh could be awesome. And you could have a scenario where he's playing opposite TJ Watt with Alex Highsmith as the rotational guy. And if he can live up to his potential, this would be one of the best edge groupings we've ever seen. So why not be awesome at something? I know it's not the biggest position of need, but sometimes pick best player available. And that's what I'm going to do. Number 25, give me a Monra St. Brown, who was a real good find from the Lions last year. Jaguars could use a receiver. Uh, you know, you obviously paid all that money for Christian Kirk. Uh, getting another guy who could be a good slot receiver for Jacksonville and could be kind of maybe a good option to just make things easier for Lawrence. A slot receiver could be really helpful for them, uh, even though, you know, Kirk will play the slot a lot. But Kirk's more of like a vertical slot guy. Uh, Amon versus St. Brown actually can do that as well. But, you know, I think he would work well in a Doug Peterson scheme on top of that. So that would be fun to see him in a Jaguars uniform. Although it's fun to see him in a Lions uniform. He's fun to watch. Number 26, it's funny. This is another guy who I'm like, you know, last year, I, my, in my mind, I'm like, man, the Browns really got a steal with Greg Newsom at 26 last year. And then in the redraft, I'm still having them get him at 26 this year. Uh, just kind of, again, how the way things broke down a little bit. A good corner. If you're losing Greg Newsom, you need to replace him with a corner. So they're replacing him with Greg Newsom. So there you go. Uh, getting Greg Newsom back is kind of, you know, an important detail here. Also at 27, Rashad Bateman here, which again, kind of makes sense. The Ravens keeping with the guy they drafted, Rashad Bateman, who, you know, they drafted him for a reason. He, there's a lot he can do very well. And I think that this could really help out uh, their team. And it's like, if they don't have him, they need to get a different wide receiver because now you're, you know, kind of, you're kind of banking on Bateman to come through next, you know, in this upcoming season. So if you lose him, you have to at least have some receiver. The New Orleans Saints drafted Peyton Turner in the real draft, who actually looked all right in the small sample size we saw of him. Uh, but I'm going to go Quiddy Pay, who I thought outperformed him by a little bit, and we just saw more playing time from him, and was the prospect I liked coming out of college better anyway. So when you have all of that stuff factoring in, I thought Quiddy Pay, you know, if he's still on the board, which he wasn't in the real draft, so that's part of maybe why he didn't get drafted there. Uh, but, you know, I like Quiddy Pay. You still could have gone Quiddy Pay back to the Colts. I decided to go Rousseau there, so now Quiddy Pay goes here. 29. Uh, the Packers get Kadarius Tony, who is definitely a developmental guy at this point. He showed some flashes for sure his rookie year. He was electric when he was on, but, you know, was struggling to get on the field, whether it's by getting injured or, you know, punching guys and getting kicked out of football games. He also, uh, you know, didn't score a touchdown. That was the main thing. And he even had some disappointing games in general. But I just think that his skill set would be such a joy to watch in that LaFleur offense, wouldn't it? Of all of those kind of, you know, clever schemes that LaFleur will, uh, you know, pull up, this could be a perfect, you know, match made in heaven for Tony if that worked. And they can help develop him. And, you know, having Rodgers throw to him should certainly help. So, uh, I would ha definitely have Tony go there. This could have a chance to be the steal of the, of the redraft, potentially. Number 30 for the Bills. They, they don't really need much. I I'm going to go with uh, offensive lineman Elijah Vera Tucker, who went 14th in the real draft to the Jets. Obviously, the Bills you know, drafted Rousseau with this pick, but now he's no longer available. So, uh, you know, uh, is, do they desperately need a guard? I don't think so. Like, you know, they got Roger Saffold, who I think should be, you know, pretty solid. You have Ryan Bates, you have Greg Van Rotten uh, from the Jets. So it's like, you got some guys who I think should be okay, but just getting another former Jet kind of in this redraft scenario, Elijah Vera Tucker. I, I just think like, again, uh, I never was crazy about his potential. I thought he was overdrafted at the time. I also thought that he, uh, you know, didn't look spectacular his rookie year necessarily, but I still do like him enough to draft him with a late first round pick. Number 31. Hey, I mean, the Ravens know what they're doing, right? Can't really critique, critique them too much. I, I had them, another team that I had drafting, you know, the two, same two players that they got. So Odafe Owe and, uh, you know, Bateman staying with them. But like, if, again, if they lost o Owe, they'd need an edge rusher right here. Oway is my you know highest graded edge rusher, so they end up going you know uh, in the same order too. Bateman went 27th in the real draft; he goes 27th in this draft. Same thing with Oway. I really don't do this intentionally, but it's just like I look at the board and say like, no, nah, this would make the most sense, which also does kind of you know check out because obviously these teams are preparing for you know the Ravens are saying well we have Oway, so we don't need another edge rusher. Whereas if they 
did, you know, actually lost him, they would have maybe, you know, signed someone, but that's, you know, that's how it works. Finally, the Buccaneers are going to get Peyton Turner from their division rival, the New Orleans Saints here. They drafted Joe Tryon Soyonka, who, uh, you know, I still have hope for. I thought it was fine his rookie year. It didn't really seem to do too much, but you know, there's still potential for him. But I just like what I saw from Peyton Turner. I thought Peyton Turner looked good. It was a smaller sample size, but I'm willing to go with that and say, hey, and part of it is he can stop the run, I think, a little better than Tryon Soyanka could. So because of that, give me someone like Peyton Turner. And Tampa Bay could not afford to not go edge rusher here. That's already their biggest position of need. You can't lose someone. And then, hey, uh, in a weird workaround, this isn't how I meant to do it, but maybe you could argue they get Peyton Turner and they get to keep Joe Tryon Soyanka now because he didn't go in the redraft, so he stays on their team. So there you go. Uh, Buccaneers, real winners of this redraft. Uh, but yeah, that's what I think. That is my redraft. What do you guys think? Why am I stupid? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.